So, so machine learning is just a way of having computers do what humans do, but effectively better. So for problems such as image classification, object detection, speech recognition, machine learning is a way of throwing a heap of mathematical operations, sometimes trillions of operations per second, um, at the problem, which is something that until recently, there's been no way for machines to be able to efficiently do that at a power and price level that makes sense. But now we're able to do that. It's important to do this at the edge, um, particularly because when all, if you're not doing it at the edge, that means you're doing it in the cloud. With all data being transferred to the cloud, then um, you have to worry about who is actually going to see that data? Do you trust the other person seeing the data? Do you trust the owners of the servers or anyone intercepting that data? Um, often the answer is no. And so you have a lot more privacy at doing it at the edge, doing it locally. You also have a lot more speed and so you can have a lot faster real-time responses. You can also have a lot better reliability because if the wire to the server is cut, you can still operate without any issues if you're doing all your processing uh, locally at the edge. And you can even work in remote areas maybe where there is no uh, wires or wireless connections uh, to a server. So the IMX Atom Plus is really an example of where, where we are bringing this machine learning calculations to the edge. And not just negligible amounts of calculations, we have over two trillion operations per second, also known as two teraops of performance in here. And anyone can have multipliers and accumulates in a chip, it's not that complicated. But what we do here is, is we have optimizations for compression, for sparsity. Sparsity is a concept where a lot of the, these machine learning algorithms have a lot of multipliers by zero, where you already know the answer is going to be zero. So if you take, uh, if you take advantage of this type of calculation, then you don't even need to do the multiply by zero things can run a lot more efficiently. Compression is important because there's a lot of data moving around with all of these calculations. If it's compressed, you don't have as much of a bottleneck to your uh, system memory. And the other thing also related to system memory is we put on this IMX 8M Plus, a DRAM controller capable of four giga transfers per second. That's the fastest DRAM speed anywhere in the whole company of NXP. One of the things that we're finding is machine learning is interesting, but machine learning is often operating on image data. The data has to come from somewhere. There's often a camera connected into the system. That, that camera often needs to have an ISP or image signal processor attached to it. Talking about our ISP in the IMX 8M Plus, we really wanted to have a way where in a lot of applications, the camera might be a long distance away uh, from whatever you're looking at. In order to get the detail that you need, that means you have to have a higher resolution, such as a 4K resolution, might be, which is eight megapixels of data. That really needs an ISP if you're working at, operating at those levels of resolution. Uh, so you need to have the ISP built into the SOC because at some lower resolutions, you can get away with an ISP maybe being somewhere else in the system. You mightn't even know there is an ISP built into the camera that you're using. But as the, as the resolutions increase, you really need to have the integrated ISP into the application processor, such as we have in the IMX 8M Plus. One interesting thing is we actually have two ISPs, two camera inputs into the IMX 8M Plus. The reason we do that is so that you can have, in the majority use case, so you can have stereo vision. That's where you have maybe a, something mimicking the left and the right eye of the human, and that way you can actually detect um, not just what you're looking at, but also the depth, how far away something is. Uh, another application you also have is where you have two different cameras, maybe one might be a very wide field of view, such as a fisheye lens or something, another one might be zoomed in on a particular area of interest, or they might be pointing in different directions. There's a lot of different applications you can get out of this. This takes a lot of uh, processing. Um, it's theoretically possible to do ISP functionality either on a CPU or on a GPU, but just the sheer number of calculations that are involved in being able to, to convert the raw data coming from an image sensor um, into the red, green, blue or YUV formats that are typically used in, a, um, in the rest of a system, that's far too much processing to be able to do um, in a soft implementation. That's why you really need dedicated hardware such as an ISP like we have in the 8M Plus. One of the really important things which we're seeing is support for HDR, that's high dynamic range. 
You might see it on some cell phones today, but it's really important in embedded applications and consumer applications too, even industrial. And what it is doing, it's actually taking multiple exposures of the same image, and they might be adjusted for different light scenarios. So one is taking uh, a short exposure, one might be taking a longer exposure. Between the two of them, one of the images will be able to get the, um, the details on the bright areas, another one will be able to bring out the details in the lower areas. You can even do it with, with three exposures too um, to get even more detail. The ISP combines all of these three different exposures into the one scene so that you can get both the detail in the bright areas and the, and the lower light areas. That's really important when you have scenarios where, for example, in, in the house, there might be some bright areas near a, a window or a light, there might be darker areas in the shadows. This is the only way you can really get the detail um, in those varying light conditions. Dewarping is a, is a important feature where depending on the lens being attached to a camera, uh, the, the image coming in might be warped beyond uh, human understanding. That happens especially if you have something like a fisheye lens where you can see a very wide field of view but everything appears curved and hard to understand. Dewarping brings it back into a normal um, human understandable as well as machine learning understandable image uh, where straight lines look straight, things don't look curvy or upside down or anything like that. That's what a dewarping engine can do. But the dewarping engine goes beyond that as well as accounting for these known and expected distortions. It can also account for distortions which are very cheap lens might have where things aren't exactly perfect or straight. The dewarp engine can also adjust and manipulate the pixels to get a very good image out of a low cost lens. One of the things we did with our ISP architecture and ISP implementation on the IMX 8M Plus was that we made sure that all of the ISP processing happened in a streaming manner. That meant that the ISP received pixels directly from the camera input to the chip, it processed them and streamed them out, writing them out to system DRAM. The ISP deliberately does not ever need to read pixels in from system memory, process them, write them back out again. Doing that just kills all of the ability to have, have very low latency and very high performance, very efficient performance um, of the processing of the images. So the ISP actually does quite a few different image enhancement features. Some of these are doing things like denoising, which is especially important in low light situations where there can be a lot of um, pixels which need to be blurred, but you can't just blur everything because then all of your edges get hard to tell, everything is just, well, blurry. Um, <laughs> so you have to have the ISP detect where the edge is. Don't blur there, but blur in the areas where blurring actually makes things look better for a human or a machine learning algorithm. Um, there are other things we do like detecting bad pixels that might be on an image sensor, making sure that all operates correctly. And, and then we can also adjust for auto white balance so we can tell the difference between, uh, between sunlight versus a fluorescent light versus incandescent light. And we can also provide information uh, to help with autofocus, auto exposure, and all of these other features. All of these things also are done through the ISP. So in many of these applications, we have cameras connected to the system. Those cameras might be going to uh, a machine learning algorithm. Uh, they might just be going sent over the network or stored somewhere. But regardless of what they're doing, even if their primary purpose is going to a machine learning uh, algorithm, you often need to save that information somewhere, um, either upload to a server or save offline for future use. You can't just save the raw data because that gets far too large. So you have to encode that. And with our video encoder on the IMX 8M Plus, we're able to do that incredibly efficiently, especially because we now have H.265 encoding algorithm, which is a more advanced, more efficient algorithm than the H.264, which uh, everyone is using today in the industry. IMX 8M Plus also includes some features specifically for the industrial market, even though they can be used by anyone. One of those is on the ECC, that's error correcting codes which are used to detect um, a double bit error or even correct a single bit error without the user even knowing about it. And that's particularly important because if you're an application where there might be, be alpha particles hitting some of the SRAMs inside the chip, that creates soft errors. Um, they're called soft errors because they don't permanently affect the chip, but they 
create disturbances that mean some of the bits might be wrong. And if you then read a memory location where the bit is wrong, then your software could go off into the weeds or crash or do, do a, a who knows what. In order to account for that, you need to have these ECC um, algorithms to detect that and correct it. And it allows you to have much lower soft error rates. That's a SER, soft error rate term, which is used in the industry for this. And the IMEX 8M Plus, through its use of ECC, both in caches as well as the on-chip RAMs in the chip, we support this. We also support it um, something a little bit more special on our DRAM bus, we have an inline ECC feature where without even storing any additional uh, bits or any wider DRAM bus, we're able to create these ECC algorithms and send them out over the same bus that we also use to send the main data. TSN is also another feature which is uh, added to the IMX 8M+. TSN stands for Time Sensitive Networking. That's where um, it's all, on the factory floor, for example, you want to make guarantee that you'll be able to send data at the right time and it'll get there. In the normal Ethernet, anyone could be sending data at any time. You might have to block, you might have to retransmit later. That doesn't work if you're in, on the factory floor. You need to have, have deterministic Ethernet that you know data will be sent and received at the right time. The IMX 8M Plus also supports some peripherals and features for the industrial market beyond the TSN Ethernet. We even have a Cortex M7 uh, CPU operating at up to 800 megahertz. That can be used to offload your Cortex A, leave that for your application processor, application domain, uh, user interface, whatever you need there. On the Cortex M7 side, you can do some real-time processing with guaranteed low latency. We even have a CAN-FD peripheral, two of them actually, which can be used for um, very low latency communication uh, local to the uh, system or some networking just operating in a, in a finite area. Together with that, plus all of the other standard peripherals and features of the IMX 8 and Plus really gives a well-rounded industrial system uh, providing a range of features for uh, industrial applications.